गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑनलाइन क्लास लेक्चर ऑफ प्रोफेसर एस के पॉल एच ओ डी यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश बी आर ए बिहार यूनिवर्सिटी मुजफ्फरपुर डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ टी डी सी सॉरी सेमेस्टर पी जी सेमेस्टर थ्री सी सी फोर्टीन सी सी फोर्टीन लिंग्विस्टिक्स सो आई हैव बीन आस्क टू टीच स्टाइलिस्टिक्स सो टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डेलीवर माई लेक्चर ऑन स्टाइलिस्टिक्स वाट इज स्टाइलिस्टिक्स स्टाइलिस्टिक्स इज ए ब्रांच ऑफ एप्लाइड लिंग्विस्टिक्स कंसर्न विद द स्टडी ऑफ स्टाइल इन टेक्सट स्पेशली बट नॉट एक्सक्लूसिवली इन लिटरेरी वर्कस also called literary linguistics stylistics focuses on the figures tropes and other rhetorical devices used to provide variety and distinctness to someone's writing it is linguistic analysis plus literary criticism according to a uh, kate wells in a dictionary of stylistics the goal of most uh, a stylistics is not simply to describe the formal features of texts for their own sake but in order to show their functional significance for the interpretation of the text or in order to relate literary effects to linguistic causes where these are felt to be relevant <coughs> studying a text closely helps to unearth layers of meaning that run deeper than just the basic plot which happens on the surface level literary stylistics is a practice of analyzing the language of literature using linguistic concepts and categories with the goal of explaining how literary meanings are created by specific uh, language choices and patterning the linguistic foregrounding in the text a uh, while stylistics has periodically uh, claimed to be objective uh, replicable in respect uh, uh, in uh, spectable uh, falsifiable and rigorous and thus uh, a quasi scientific subjective interpretation is an um, it a decable element of such textual analysis uh, nevertheless uh, the best uh, stylistic analysis uh, which predictively demonstrate direct relations between prominent uh, linguistic forms and patterns in a text and meanings or effects Uh, meanings or effects uh, readers exp experience are explicit uh, in their uh, procedures uh, and argumentation systematic and uh, uh, testable by uh, independent researchers stylistics is an interdisciplinary interdisciplinary uh, situated between literary studies and linguistics and uh, from time to time has been shunned by both who for decades uh, predicted its uh, decline if not disappearance the opposite has happened stylistics is flourishing and some of its uh, uh, proponents argue that it offers more authentic and relevant uh, literary studies than uh, much of what goes on in uh, university um, literature departments equally some stylish uh, style um, stylisticians uh, uh, seek their work uh, as a more coherent linguistics uh, adopted um, to a particular purpose uh, then uh, much of the abstract uh, linguistics uh, uh, pursued by academic linguistics in recent years Uh, stylistics uh, has been uh, reanimated by adoption and adaptation of ideas sourced in uh, cognitive linguistics and by the increasingly easy creation of uh, huge corpora of languages in digital machine searchable form uh, these two developments have given rise to uh, various forms of uh, cognitive stylistics and corpus stylistics in the early decades of the 21st century 
Uh, one of the most exciting stands of work in stylistics is exploring kinds of uh, iconicity uh, in literary texts, passages of language that can be seen uh, to enact or perform the effects or meanings the text is intent on conveying. Elements in a style in literature. Elements of a style studied in literary works are what is up for discussion in any literature or uh, writing class such as big pictures, uh, big picture elements, character development, how a character changes throughout the story, dialogue, lines spoken uh, or internal thoughts, foreshadowing, hints dropped about what's going to happen later, a uh, form whether something is poetry, prose, drama, a short story, a sonnet, etc. Imagery, scenes, uh, set or items are shown with descriptive words. Irony, and uh, an occurrence that's the opposite of what's expected. Uh, expected. Juxtaposition, putting two elements together to compare or contrast them. Mood, the atmosphere of a work the attitude of the narrator, pacing, how quickly the narration unfolds. Point of view, the narrator's perspective, first person, I, or third person, he or she. Structure, how a story is told, beginning, action, climax, denouement, or how to, um, how to, or how a piece is organized. Introduction, main body, conclusion versus reverse pyramid uh, journalistic style. Symbolism. Uh, using an element of the story um, uh, to represent uh, something else. Theme. A message delivered by or shown in a work, its central topic or big idea. Tone. The writer's attitude toward the subject or manner with choosing vocabulary and presenting information such as uh, informal or formal. Line by line elements. Uh, alliteration, close repetition of consonants used uh, for effect. Assonance, close repetition of vowels used for effect. Colloquialisms, informal words such as slang and regional terms. Diction, the correctness of the overall grammar, a big picture, or how characters speak, uh, such as with an accent or with poor grammar. Metaphor, uh, a means to compare two elements can also be big picture if an entire story or scene is laid out to show a parallel with something else. Repetition, using the same words or phrases in short amount of time for emphasis. A rhyme, uh, when the same sounds appear in two or more words. Rhythm, having musicality to the writing such as by using stressed and unstressed syllables in a line of poetry or sentence, a variety or repetition in a paragraph. So you can get uh, uh, lots of example in T.S. Eliot's poems, especially uh, that I quote now, uh, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. So this is the, in this poem we have the concept of a modern man uh, and modernity. Uh, besides uh, this uh, modernity theme, we have a superb uh, um, uh, rhythm, rhyme, and uh, rhythm in uh, Eliot's uh, poem. So you just say, let us go then, you and I. The evening is spread out against the sky. Like a patient, it lies upon a table through certain half-deserted streets. The muttering retreats of one night cheap hotel in the room. The women come and go, talking of Michael and Gino. These are the lines I have quoted from T.S. Eliot's uh, poem entitled Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. So we get the, uh, the, one of the best examples of uh, stylistics in this, uh, in this poem. 
so uh, then then is it is sentence variety variation in the structure and length of consecutive sentences uh, then syntax the arrangement of words in a sentence elements of a style are the characteristics of the language used in the written work and stylistics is their study how can how an author uses them is what makes one a writer's work distinct from another from henry james to mark twain to virginia wolf an author's way of using the elements creates their distinct writing voice why studying literature is useful just as a baseball pitcher studies how to properly grip and throw a type of pitch uh, a certain way to make the ball go in a certain location and to create a game plan uh, based on the lineup of the specific hitters uh, studying writing and literature helps people to learn how to improve their writing and thus communication skills as well as to learn empathy and the human condition by becoming wrapped up in characters uh, characters thoughts and uh, and actions in a book a story or poem uh, people experience the that narrator's point of view uh, and can draw on the knowledge and those feelings when interacting with others in real life who might have uh, a similar thought uh, processes or actions stylisticians who are the stylisticians stylistics stylist stylisticians in many ways stylistics is an interdisciplinary uh, in, uh, in, uh, interdisciplinary um, study of textual interpretations using both language compre uh, comprehension and an understanding of social dynamics a uh, stylisticians uh, textual analysis is influenced by rhetoric reasoning and history michael burke describes the field in the rutledge and book of stylistics as an empirical or forensic discourse uh, critic wherein uh, wherein the stylistician is a person who with his or her detailed knowledge of the workings of morphology phonology lexis syntax semantics and various discourse and uh, pragmatic models goes in search of language based evidence in order to support or indeed challenge the subjective interpretations and evaluations of various critics and cultural commentators but paints a stylistician then as a kind of sherlock holmes character who has expertise in grammar and rhetoric and a love of literature and other creative texts picking apart the details on how they operate piece by piece observing a style as it informs meaning as it informs comprehension <laughs> literary stylistics studying forms such as poetry drama and prose Inter, uh, interpretive interpretive stylistics uh, how the linguistic elements work to create uh, meaningful art if a if a evaluative if a evaluative stylistics how an author's style works or doesn't in the work corpus stylistics studying the frequency of various elements in a text such as to determine the authenticity of a manuscript discourse stylistics how language in use creates meaning such as studying uh, parallelism assonance alliteration and rhyme feminist stylistics commonalities among women's writing uh, uh, how writing is endangered and how uh, women's writing is read uh, differently than men's <clears throat> computational stylistics using computers to analyze a text and determine uh, a writer's style cognitive uh, stylistics the study of what happens in the mind when it encounters language modern understanding uh, rhetoric 
as far uh, as far back as ancient Greece and philosophers like Aristotle, the study of rhetoric has been an important part of human communication and, evol uh, and evolution as a result. It's no wonder then uh, that author Peter Barry uh, uses rhetoric to define stylistics uh, as the modern version of the ancient uh, discipline of the ancient discipline uh, known as uh, rhetoric uh, in his book uh, Beginning Theory. This is a very uh, famous book Beginning Theory by uh, Peter Barry. You must uh, uh, go through this book um, anytime. Uh, but very in uh, but very short Barry goes on to say that rhetoric teaches its students how to structure an argument how to make effective use of figures of speech and generally how to pattern and vary a speech or a piece of writing so as to produce maximum impact. He says that stylistics uh, uh, analysis of these similar qualities or rather how they are utilized would therefore entail that stylistics is a modern interpretation of the ancient body. However, he also notes that stylistics uh, differs from simple close reading in the following uh, ways. A close reading emphasizes uh, differences between literary language and that of the general speech community. Stylistics, uh, by contrast, emphasizes connections between literary language and everyday language. Second, stylistics uh, uses specialized technical terms and concepts uh, which uh, derive from the science of linguistics, uh, terms like uh, transitivity under lexicalization, uh, collocation, and cohesion. Uh, stylistics uh, make greater um, claims to scientific objectivity than does close reading, uh, stressing that its methods and produces can be learned and applied by all. Hence, uh, its, uh, um, hence uh, its aim is partly the demystification of both uh, literature and criticism. Stylistics uh, is arguing for uh, the universality of language uses while close reading uh, hinges upon an observation of how this particular style and uses may vary from and thereby make an error relating to the norm. Stylist, uh, stylistics uh, then is the pursuit of understanding key elements of a style that affect a given audience's interpretation of a text. A brief, um, um, a brief history of stylistics. Uh, are you sitting comfortably? Then we will tell you the story of how stylistics began. Stylistic, uh, stylistics explores how readers interact with the language of mainly literary texts in order to explain how we understand and are affected by texts when we read them. The development of a stylistics given that it combines the use of linguistic um, analysis um, with uh, what we know about the psychological processes involved in reading depended at least in part on the study of linguistics and psychology, both largely 20th century phenomena, becoming reasonably the 20th century. Its uh, beginnings in Anglo-American criticism are usually traced back to the uh, publication of the books uh, listed below. Uh, so two books uh, that I'm going to refer, uh, Roger Fowler, uh, edited 1966 essays on a style in language london rutledge and kagan paul the second reference book is uh, uh, donald c freeman uh, edited 1971 linguistics and literary style new york holt uh, reinhardt and winston geoffrey and uh, next is a uh, geoffrey n leach uh, 
A Linguistic Guide to English Poetry, London, Longman. Uh, Thomas A. C. P. O. Um, uh, uh, 1960, a style in language, Cambridge, um, MIT Press. Perhaps <clears throat> the most influential article is that by Roman Jacobson in Seabock. It is called Closing Statement, Linguistics and Poetics because it was a contribution to a conference which Seabock uh, Seabock uh, published as a collection of papers. Uh, it is pretty difficult, so we wouldn't uh, recommend nipping off to read it until uh, you have done a bit more stylistics. But uh, as we shall see, Jacobson is an important figure who connects uh, together various stands in the development of uh, stylistics. Stylistics can be seen as a logical extension of moves within literary criticism early in the 20th century to concentrate on studying texts rather than authors. 19th century literary criticism concentrated on the author and in Britain the text-based criticism of the two critics I.A. Richards and William Empson, uh, his pupil, rejected that approach in order to concentrate on the literary texts uh, themselves and how readers were affected by those texts. Uh, this approach is often called practical criticism and it is matched by a similar critical movement in the USA associated with Clint, uh, Clint Brooks, uh, Rene Velleck, uh, um, Austin Warren and others called the New Criticism. New Criticism was based almost exclusively, exclusively on the description of literary works as independent aesthetic objects. Uh, but Practical criticism, but practical criticism uh, tended to pay more attention, uh, more attention to the psychological, um, psychological aspects involved in a reader uh, with a work. However, these two critical movements shared two important features. First, an emphasis on the language of the text rather than its author and uh, an assumption that what criticism needed was accounts of important works of literature based on the um, intuitional reading outcomes of trained and aesthetically sensitive critics. These critics did not analyze the language of texts very much but rather paid very close attention to the language of their texts when they read them and then described how they understood them and were affected by, by them nearly a hundred years later. This approach is still very influential in schools and uh, universities in the Western world and gives rise to the kind of critical essay where writers make a claim about a text means or how it affects them and then quote and perhaps discuss a textual sample to uh, illustrate the uh, uh, few agreed for, uh, um, uh, view are good for. Uh, this could perhaps be called the claim and quote approach to literary criticism. In general terms, stylistic, uh, stylish, uh, stylisticians they believe that claim and quote strategy is inadequate in arguing for particular view of text uh, of a text because like the like the slip uh, it twixt uh, it twixt cup and lip uh, there are often logical gaps between the claim and the quotation intended to support it in other words Stylisticians uh, uh, think that uh, intuition is not enough and that uh, uh, we should analyze the text uh, in detail and take careful account of what we know about how people read uh, when are going for particular views of texts. But the stylistics approach to Western Europe and North America clearly uh, grows out of the earlier critical approaches associated with practical criticism and new criticism. Stylisticians uh, also use the same kind of approach on non-literary texts. 
there is another important st strand of influence in the development of, of stylistics, the one which uh, Roman Jacobson uh, was involved in, which comes from Eastern Europe. In the early years of the 20th century, the members of the formalist uh, linguistic circle in Moscow, usually called the Russian formalists, uh, like I.A. Richards, also rejected undue concentration on the author in literary criticism in favor of an approach which favored the analysis of the language of the text in relation to psychological effects of that linguistic structure. The group contained uh, linguistics, uh, literary critics, and psychologists, uh, and they and the Prague structuralists uh, uh, see the paragraph below uh, began to develop what uh, what became a very influential aspect of textual study in uh, later stylistics uh, called uh, foregrounding theory. This view suggested that some parts of the texts and more effect uh, effect on readers than others in terms of interpretation because the textual parts so we are linguistically deviant or spatially patterned in some way thus making them psychologically um, salient or foregrounded for readers the russian formalists were in effect the first uh, stylisticians but their work was not understood in the west because of the effects of uh, the Russian Revolution in 1917. After the revolution, formalism fell out of favor and in any case, uh, academic uh, communication between what became the Soviet, uh, uh, the Soviet Union and Western Europe and North America virtually uh, ceased. Roman Jacobson became one of the most influential um, linguist, linguists of the 20th century and the reason for his considerable influence on stylistics in addition to his own academic brilliance was because he, he linked various schools of linguistics together. He left Moscow at the time of the Russian Revolution and moved to Prague. Uh, where he became a member of the Prague Structuralist Circle, who were also uh, very interested in the in the linguistic structure of texts and how they affected uh, readers. Then, when Czechoslovakia also became communist, he moved to the USA. Rather like a beneficial virus, he carried the approach, which later. Uh, became called stylistics uh, with him and helped those who wanted to uh, develop practical and new criticism in more precise analytical directions. The introduction uh, uh, towards a linguistic theory of foregrounding uh, Edizioni del Orso Turin has a more detailed history of stylistics and the concept of foregrounding a concept which is uh, uh, a cornerstone of a stylistic analysis. In some modern literary criticism, a formalist is often used almost as a term of abuse. Some critics accuse of stylistics of being formalist and so inadequate to account for the variant responses of readers uh, to texts. But is it? Certainly one of its historical roots is in the group called the Russian formalists and and one of its one of its historical roots is in the group called the Russian formalists and one of its founding fathers, Roman Jacobson, tended to assume that uh, all you had to do account for a text was to analyze as completely as completely as uh, mm, as possible the details of its linguistic structure but although like the russian formalists uh, stylisticians uh, are concerned to describe the linguistic structure of literary texts precisely and in detail mm, they are also very interested in trying to understand how readers res respond to that detail as foregrounding uh, theory amongst others shows as you take part in the various sessions of this course you might like to consider how formalist stylistics is and whether this is a good or bad thing 
style has been an object of study from ancient times. Aristotle, Cicero, uh, Demetrius, and Quintilian treated style as the proper adornment of thought. In this way, which prevailed um, throughout the Renaissance period, devices of a style can be catalogued. The essayist or narrator is expected to uh, frame his ideas with the help of model sentences and prescribed kinds of figures suitable to his mode of discourse. Modern stylistics uses the tool of formal linguistic analysis coupled with the methods of literary criticism. Its goal is to try to isolate characteristic uses and functions of language and the rhetoric rather than um, advance uh, normative or perspective rules and patterns. The traditional idea of a style as something properly added uh, to thoughts contrast, uh, uh, contrasts uh, with the ideas that, uh, that derived from Charles Bailey, 1865 to 1947, the Swiss philologist uh, and Leo Spitzer, uh, 1960, the Austrian literary critic. According to the followers of these thinkers, uh, a style in language arises from the possibility of choice among alternative forms of expression as for example between children, uh, kids, youngsters and youths, each of which has a different uh, evocative value. This theory emphasizes the relation between a style and linguistics as does the theory as does the theory of uh, Edward, uh, Edward Sapir, uh, who talked about literature that is uh, form-based. Uh, Elgernon, Charles Swinburne, Paul uh, Verlaine and Horace, uh, Catullus, Virgil and much of Latin literature and literature that is uh, content-based Homer, Plato, Dante, William Shakespeare and the near uh, um, Untrans uh, untransla uh, untranslatable untranslatability of the former. A linguist, for example, less bogged down in imagery, uh, in imagery and meaning, might note the effective placing of dental and palatal uh, uh, spirits in in Berlin's uh, famous uh, famous uh, Berlin's famous the impressionistic, impressionistic, slow, dragging effect of Edgar Allan Poe's on desperate seas along want to roam, roam can be made more objective by the linguist's uh, knowledge of the stress, stress, uh, stress uh, creates the uh, drawn out uh, interminable effect. Style is also seen as a mark of character. The County Baffons, uh, famous uh, epigram, Lee style is la home meme. Style is the man himself. In, in his uh, discourse, uh, Sir uh, Lee style and Arthur Schopenhauer's uh, definition of a style as the uh, physiognomy of the mind suggests that no matter how calculatingly choices may be made, a writer's style will bear the mark of his personality. An experienced writer is able to rely on the power of his habitual choices of sounds, words, uh, and uh, syntactic uh, patterns to convey his personality or fundamental outlook. 20th century work on analysis, uh, uh, work, uh, work on stylistics, particularly in Britain by such scholars as Roger Fowler and M. A. K. Halliday looked at the relationships uh, between social, contextual and formal um, linguistic analysis. There were also attempts as in the work of Stanley Fish and Barbara uh, Hunstein Smith from the 1970s and 1980s to interrogate the logical assumptions uh, underlying stylistics.
Edward Sapir, born January 26, 1884, uh, Lewenberg, uh, Pomerania, Germany. Now, um, uh, so um, uh, he was an, uh, one of the four most American linguists and anthropologists uh, of his time, most widely known for his contributions to the study of North American Indian languages, a founder of uh, ethnolinguistics, uh, which considers the relationship of culture uh, to language. He was also a principal developer of the American descriptive school of uh, structural linguistics. Shapir, the son of uh, an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, uh, uh, was uh, taken to the United States at, at, uh, at the age of five. As a graduate student at Columbia University, he became under the influence uh, of the noted anthropologist Franz Boas who directed his attention to the rich possibilities of linguistic anthropology. Uh, for about uh, six years, he studied the language, the languages of the uh, Yena, uh, Pait, uh, and others in the Western states. Now, finally, I will discuss uh, the remaining part, the last part, psycholinguistics. Psycholinguistics, the study of psychological aspects of language, experiments investigating such topics as a short term and long term memory, uh, uh, perceptual strategies, and speech uh, perception based on uh, linguistic models are part of uh, this discipline. Most work in psycholinguistics has been done on the learning of language by children. Language is extremely complex, yet children learn it quickly and with, uh, with ease. Thus, the study of child language is important for psychologists interest, uh, interested in uh, cognition and learning and for linguistic concern uh, with the insights it can give about the structure of language. In the 1960s and early 70s, uh, much research in child uh, language used the transformational generative model uh, proposed by the American linguistic Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky. So this way, dear students, uh, I have uh, today I have finished my lecture, and thank you for your uh, patient hearing to me. So I am really very happy that you have you have been with me.